Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. This is podcast number 82, I think. Pretty sure. So, joining me this week, we have Amy. Morning, y'all! Yeah. Someone <laughs> had an entire tin of coffee for breakfast, by the sound of it. I don't drink coffee! Oh, I didn't say you that drank is- it. I did not say <laughs> you drank it. I haven't had coffee. Uh, an entire vat of Red Bull. <laughs> no, nah, don't drink that either. <laughs> uh, we have Stuart. Hey, babe. Stuart. Stuart. What? We have Stuart. Hi. Say hello. Oh. <laughs> Be a- oh, hi. Be a normal, reasonable human being, unlike last week when you just decided to shun everybody. <laughs> I fold Razor. Synapse was having issues. In, he's still having issues with randomly yeah. audio ducking for no apparent reason. And like, I don't know. See, it just sort of. I don't know. That's all you get out. That's all we get out of him. Like two syllables. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna blame him again. And last but not least, we have Eugene. Hello. So this week, we may have Scarecrow showing up later. Yeah, we may or may not have Zombie Scarecrow because he is just waking up. So who knows if he will join us or not? Uh, but knowing him, he'll jump in at probably the worst possible time. So this week we are looking at the new Power Ranger suits, the new Han Solo actor, and a couple of clips from Independence Day and Agents of Shield, and. Maybe if I'm in a good mood and Stuart's microphone starts working properly, I'll let him cover the stormtroopers. It's just no response. I think Stuart broke his microphone again. <laughs> it's going to be a very quiet you podcast. Stop. You should stop chewing on it. It works better if you don't try and chew on it. Blah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh. <laughs> So, anyway, let's kick it off with the new Power Ranger suits. Stuart, hopefully without totally failing, what's the lowdown on the new Power Ranger suits? Uh, so, yeah, the suits uh, were released, I think it was Wednesday last week? Sometime last week. All of a sudden, And I'm okay with them. And all of a sudden, Rita's green armour makes sense. Yes. My opinion is, um, are they paying Stark some money for that? Yeah, the, one of the pictures I tagged Stuart in, and the guy actually sent me a message saying, why the hell did you tag this guy in my picture? And um, I was like, I couldn't... My phone just would not tag you anywhere else. It would only let me tag the picture. I couldn't tag you in the yeah. comments. I couldn't do anything. It was just my phone was having a bad day. So, And it was a picture of someone got the Iron Man toy and the original Power Rangers toys and did the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z. And I thought... <laughs> That pretty much summarizes the look of the new Power Ranger suits. To be fair, did you expect them to go with the spandex again? Yes. Really? No. <laughs> first century. No, thank you. I don't think I want. I don't think I want spandex Power Rangers anymore. <laughs> kind of. Oh, yeah. uh. The kids, sure, but this is not this is not an aimed at kids anymore. This is meant to be a gritty adult movie. Okay. Which I sort of find weird. Yeah. Well, they're probably aiming at the people they had when yeah, who grew up with it, who are now started. adults. Yeah. yeah. The cool, I, I like the description of how this is, of how they describe the suits. They call it alien technology that grows on them. So it means eventually that it makes me think the suits are going to have an evolution of some kind. Have you seen Maybe. the um the supposed uh, what's it called concept art of the Dinobots is floating about online as well? 
but no idea how legit it is. Probably totally not. It's all just fan art. Anything from Zords is all fan art. There's nothing out for the Zords. Ah. Because the one I've seen sort of looked like Grimlock that had... from yeah, the no, Transformers movies. And I was like, wow. You, yeah, no, any art you see is all fan art. Um, and Stuart's gone again. <laughs> the, yeah, last can I point out? The amazing fading can Stuart. Can I point out one little thing? You know, um, having an alien thing growing on you, no, that's never been a bad idea. Let's just ask Spider-Man about that one. <laughs> I was just about to mention Venom. I was like, hmm, well, let's see how that worked out. Yup. <laughs> But very well. The question is, are they going to have a Zordon? Are they going to have an Alpha 5? Because if they really don't, then it's not Power Rangers. Uh, not Ooh. sure on... Don't and... know much of information about it. Yeah, we, we don't... There's we don't a lot it. of... There's a lot hidden still. <laughs> it's so funny listening to Stuart, because you can only get two words out before he can't hear him anymore. <laughs> Which would be Go really useful yourself. for Hawk to be up. Oh, Hawk. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, we are taking Scarecrow. donations on SaveSciFi.com to buy Stuart a new new microphone. If you'd like to contribute, please go to SaveSciFi.com and just mark in the comments that your donation is for a new microphone for Stuart. No, or no. you can put on there, we're just looking at Stuart. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. We're taking donations to fire Stuart. If we reach our, stre- our first stretch goal of $50, we will consider getting Stuart a new microphone and then beating him up with it. If we reach our second stretch goal of $100, we will definitely buy a new microphone and beat him up with it. <laughs> if we reach our third no. stretch goal of $150, then we will take video of Amy beating Stuart up with the microphone. And uh, nope. Oh, you're no fun. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> Hear that, Amy? He's challenging you to a microphone duel. What? See how quickly you can kill him. <laughs> anyway. May I remind you, I did do martial arts for 12 years and weapons training. I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't hear any of that. You you dropped out again. He, he did martial arts and weapon training for 12 years. Shut up, I'm pretending it's not working, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah... I'm still very sort of sceptical of the Power Rangers movie. Um, but on the plus side, at least we've got Apocalypse to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. What is yeah. it? Like nine days from now it's, it's out in Australia or something like that? Yep, we get it on the 19th. Yeah, so nine days until Apocalypse. So on, yeah. the, on, the, on the plus side, if the, if the Apocalypse happens in nine, in nine days, then we won't be around to watch Star Trek Beyond. Woo! <laughs> That's sad. Where's Bird about it? Oh man, where's EJ when we need him? Oh yeah. Where is EJ indeed? He is probably still recolouring the video from last week. <sighs> man, he's... Why? Well, they... Uh... they said at the Con or, or Wonderfest or whatever it was out west, here in the U.S., the only thing they had for Star Trek Beyond Hope was a poster. Yeah. They had no footage. Yeah, there's nothing. There, there is absolutely nothing. Since that first trailer, there has been a couple of photo leaks from set, and that's it. And that yeah. is not good for a movie. Like, that is really, really, really not good for a movie. Oh, you know, no, you want to know what's worse? There's already a script for Star Trek 4. But, but, and, Ow. but, 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 I know. But, I don't even, how is that a, uh, it's, it's like Transformers all over again. The first one was really, well, the first one was, I, would, I wouldn't say really good, I would say, Relatively good compared to the second one. We'll go with relatively good compared to the second one. Um, the third one should probably be better than the second because, to be honest, 
when your stepping stone that you've got to step over is at ankle high, it's really hard to not do a better movie. Are you sure? I'm sure they could do worse. Oh, don't please don't set them that challenge. Just <laughs> Star Trek Five. <sighs> Star Trek 3, Beyond Hope. Star Trek 4, why are we still making these? Star Trek 5, give me all the monies. Star Trek 6, ha 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 ha, we're still making these. Star Trek 7, seriously, why do you still watch these? <laughs> and then just for Star no, Trek and that's about it. And for no apparent reason, it would jump from Star Trek 7 to Star Trek 12. Um, Star Trek 12, The Lost Episodes. And then Star Trek 15... Because counting is hard. <laughs> By then, it's a next gen reboot. Why? Fuck knows. <laughs> you get to play the card in a next gen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure he said, Who do we think should play Picard in the next gen reboot? And the only answer I have is Professor X, the the, the new Professor X. <laughs> so if we just keep him bald, we we'll just we'll just go whole, we'll just go full cycle here. So, Captain Picard became Professor X. Professor X became younger, then became Captain Picard. Uh, no. Yes, that would work. Can't, can't be as bad as friggin' X Men. So. Anyway, it says who person who we're gonna we when we're gonna go and watch it um, next week. Oh yeah, we uh, you have no choice. You have to watch it because we won't be well. We won't be doing a special episode for X Men Apocalypse unless it's like ridiculously good. Um, we will still be covering it in the podcast the week after. So yeah, um, let's move on to the really quick quick clip that covers the fallout of Civil War in Captain America uh, the Captain America Civil War in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I'm going to play a clip really quickly. You guys will be able to hear it. Um, the other guys won't. Here we go. I'm here because the President sent me. The Zagobio Corps is your law of the land now. He's concerned you may have some undocumented enhanced assets working for you. And why would he think that? Because he's not a moron. Come on, Phil. It's time for S.H.I.E.L.D. to come in from the cold. Re-legitimize. In exchange for revealing and registering any inhumans we may have? Not gonna happen. <sighs> Why are you so pig-headed? It's good enough for the Avengers. Not all of them. And the Avengers operate in the spotlight. We work in the shadows. What's going on in those shadows, Phil? That's what I want to know. You better start opening some doors, or I promise you, I'm gonna start kicking them down. All right. Let's go for a ride. No blindfold? No blindfold, but you might want to buckle up. What? So, that's a little clip from um, the, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Facebook page just released. And it shows effectively the general sitting down with Coulson and them having a little bit of a chat. You heard it, I just played it. Um, so, what do we think the fallout is going to be from Civil War? Now, I know Eugene hasn't said it, so spoiler free. Um, what do you think the fallout of the Sokovia Accord is going to be in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series? It will be different, um, interesting, but then again, they've got issues with Sky, um, Daisy at the moment. Um, so and there are a number of other. Well, Daisy's running her own Inhuman team. In not, last I saw, she was not at this exact moment. She is not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she's I'm trying to build up. a team. The, she's trying to build a team. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, sort of, kind of fell apart in the last half, to, last couple episodes. I don't want to ruin it if you haven't seen it, so. Um, a few episodes behind. So, so yeah, but um, I think the fallout will be interesting in Agents of Shield because they are using quite a few it Inhumans, is. and if they've got a register the Inhumans under the Sokovia Accord, which I'm assuming they would, 
um, then that gets really, really sketchy really, really quickly. It's... Well, c- come on, Colson just said no. Yeah. Colson well, sided see, with Captain thought... America, so... See, I saw something really interesting. Would, um... And this might be a plot line, and this might be a plot line for potential Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but would Star-Lord have to register? He is human? Uh, well, I thought he was just a normal human. He's just a... Well, technically he's half human, half whatever the hell Alien. his father is. Um, yeah, so, and he's a hero, so technically he still has to register. Yeah, but, see, the difference is Guardians of the Galaxy takes place so far away from Earth that he wouldn't know anyway. Like... It would be totally unaware until he returns to Earth, which I'm pretty sure he does as part of Volume Two. Well, yeah, he's kind of, that's why that's why I think it could be a potential plot plot thing for Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Yeah. Well, I heard there's already that Guardians of the Galaxy is coming back to Earth. Yeah. Well, I heard they're going to be introducing Sword in Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Sword. Yeah. Ooh, right? Sword, for those who don't know, is the equivalent of Shield, but they protect the space around Earth, as opposed to the actual sort of Earth proper. So while I... they are substantially smaller uh-huh. in power than Shield, they are still sort of pretty brutal. Then again, Shields. Sometimes you go, "Are you still there, or are you just going?" I'm not leaving. I'm just playing around with the whole wipe out of it. Yeah. Now, one of the questions that I had after Civil War, and I didn't really bring it up in the review, was, and I'll, this isn't a spoiler, so it shouldn't be too bad for you, Gene. Um, We know that Spider-Man joins Iron Man's side, and in the movie it's revealed how. The question is, why, considering it takes place in Queens, which is the same place the Netflix guys do their thing, um, why haven't we seen hints of him no. in the Netflix series? Yeah, Hell's Kitchen is right near Queens. Oh, okay, yeah. He said in Queens. Yeah. Um, why haven't we seen some potential evidence of Spider-Man in the Netflix series, and do you think we will? Mm, oh, well, remember, he's only popped up in the past six months, and Daredevil has been and that, Deadpool's that, been that around for a bit longer. Yeah, just, so that just, could be explained. That he, they could be something with Jessica Jones. Yeah, Stuart, you're, yeah, you're, 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 Stuart, you're waving in and out again. So yeah. I, I got the gist of it. Um, it because he hasn't been around that long. It's they won't be part of the Daredevil universe because that's taken place at the wrong relative points in time to introduce him or even have him as a cameo. But Jessica Jones, on the other hand, which has got a second season coming out fairly soon, I think. Just Google... Just do it. Do the Google. I'm pretty sure Jessica Jones Season 2 is coming out at some point. And considering they just greenlit... Um, what's his face? His own series. Punisher, his own series. It's looking like it's going to be really, cool. You think that'd be really funny, the fact that they're doing Punisher, his own series... Exactly, but um, Punisher, no, they, what they're trying to do on Netflix is build up their own Avengers equivalent, so they're trying to get to a point where they can have the Defenders, and the Defenders are sort of like the Avengers, but for Hell's Kitchen, and that sort of immediate area, um, so I'm curious what direction they're going to take that, because very soon they're going to have, like what? You've got Daredevil, you've got Jessica Jones, you've got Iron Fish, you've got Luke Cage, you've got... Um, oh, I said his name a second ago. Someone else. Blarg. Um, Punisher. And so you've got sort of five-ish series already taking place in the same relatively small area. Um, and then you've got The Defenders, which will be sort of a big mashup of all of those series together. Um, which will be sort of like the the Avengers equivalent pay dirt for that universe, for that section of the universe, which would be really cool. Mm. Now, they're looking at renaming Civil War, so I'm curious as to what direction they're going to take that. 
I'm thinking Avengers Rise of Thanos. Can I say renaming it? You can't exactly do. What, renaming Infinity War? Yes. Sure you can. They're just not going to have it as part one, part two. They're going to be calling it, um, well, who knows, they haven't announced it yet. Okay, so they're re-releasing it, they're renaming part two of it, okay. Yeah. No, no, Avengers Infinity War will no longer be called Infinity War. It's going to be called something else. Both parts are getting a new name. That makes no sense, but okay. So, so yeah. That's Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Um, what else have we got to cover? Uh, the Solo. new Han Solo. Solo. Oh, new Han Solo actor. I uh, don't see how that works. Really, I don't. He doesn't look anything like Han. Just saying. It's more for the point of you have a set of characters like replacing Wolverine. Yeah, but they it need. Doesn't really they, work. They, they're trying to do a origin. Okay, the basic premise for why they recast Han Solo is because he's a hundred million years old right now. It's that simple. He is. He just is. So what they're doing is they're recasting him as a young Han Solo. So if they do flashbacks and stuff. They could do sort of like what they did with, um, what's it called? Like what they Ray. did with, um, no, not with Ray, with, um, Charles Xavier in X-Men. Where they can have sort of like a younger version and an older version played by two different actors. And have them, while they will never actually meet on screen, that still gives you a chance to tell those stories of like when Han met Chewie. When Han got the Falcon, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, this guy's actually got a fairly decent list of stuff to his name. And the funny thing is, watch um, the first watch Hell Caesar. He's really good in Hell Caesar. He is. I haven't it, seen Hell, Hell Caesar. Caesar's like a really shit movie, but he's like the shining light in it. Oh, I was going to say I heard Hail Caesar was fairly. Blog. So. Oh no, no, the movie, the movie itself was shit, but he did a great job with all he was doing. Fair enough. Well, I just... like you, I like you, you McGregor and the priest. Yeah. So once again, Stuart is fading in and out. Um. So here's what he's credited for. Um, the Yellow Bird. Um. An untitled Warren Betty project. He plays Frank Forbes. And that is meant to come out soon, but it is still untitled. That's weird. Hail Caesar, Running Wild, uh, Maple Leaves, and it, from there it sort of goes to short videos and documentaries. <laughs> he was in CSI at one point and Supernatural for an episode back in 2005. So right back near the start. Um... So uh, it was in like like you ready? These are these are his characters' names: Ben in Supernatural, Sven in CSI, Dan in Switcheroo, Bernie in Tetro, Tetro. Okay. Yeah. Ben in Greased, actor at party, Harry, Flamingo. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He was a fl- it's, it's he's credited as flamingo in Twixt. I don't okay. know. Um, Alan. None of these characters have second names, by the way. Um, Whip. Alan. Ethan, Alan. 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 Nineteen forties teenager. Danny. Jesse. <laughs> Eli. A hobby Doyle, in Hail Caesar. So he actually got a proper name, and then. Three projects that are in final production. So, he, he, he's not the most well-known actor, which is, I think, what they're going for, was someone who wasn't that well-known, um, who was relatively young. He is not that old. He was born in 89, so he's only 26. 26? 27. He's only 27. 27? Yes, 27. <laughs> 
God. Me and maths are just not friends anymore. <laughs> We're not even on speaking terms. Clearly. Yeah. Shut up. It's like me and English. We haven't. Me and English haven't been on speaking terms for years. Especially when I try and think of something silly. Then it just goes bad. So, anyway. How about this? Stuart, here's a question just just for you. Who would win? Ben Affleck's Batman? Or Captain America from Civil War? Captain America. In terms of... And still it's gone again. <laughs> I'll go Captain America. Captain America? See, for yeah. I would have say Captain America definitely has the sheer strength and endurance. If he can take on a man in an iron suit in a one on one fifty cuffs and not get immediately annihilated, you're pretty friggin' good. Um so at the very least Batman's got his work cut out for him. But he's also got the Batman has got his utility belt. And it's probably got some anti Captain America spray in there somewhere. That'll revert him back to Come his on. scrawny little version of himself before he was Captain America ified. <sighs> what? It's Batman. Batman is Batman, he Batman's the Batman. That's super ultra serious. <laughs> just then again. jabs him in the neck, goes and, and all of a sudden he just goes, ah, and turns into a little skinny guy again. He's like, what did you do? And he's like, ha ha, and squirrels away. <laughs> but then again, well, you think about it, bats can't even make a shark repellent. Yeah. Well, he did make a shark repellent. In the old movies, he had shark repellent in the helicopter. Ed. Yeah, but in a spray form. <laughs> so, anyway, I think in a close quarters fight, Batman, I think, might actually have it. Yes, Captain America is stronger. Yes, he's potentially got the endurance. Um, but the difference is Batman is far more agile. Look at the way he fought in those in the battle in Batman vs. Superman near the end there. He was put far more damage in far more quickly than we've ever seen Captain America do. So, and sort of catch twenty two with bats in mm. America. Yeah. But the fact is, you, um, bats depends a lot on his um, equipment, his tools, and that. And Captain America depends on pure strength, that and his shield. So yeah, it's sort of a toss up. And I think Bats would definitely at least give him a run for his money, especially the Ben Affleck Batman. The Ben Affleck Batman was probably the most... Um, what's the word I'm after? Athletic? Of the yeah. Batmans that I can remember seeing? Like The way that he fought was very Arkham Asylum. It was very sort of here, there, all over the place, using yourself, your own instincts against you. So. But then again, you saw his workout. <laughs> oh yeah, his workout rivals bloody Green Arrows. So, and it, his workout is so brutal it made me feel tired just watching him. <laughs> I'm like, wow. So, yeah. anyway, yeah. Let's, let's move on. Let's jump to the model report really quickly. Well, this week um, there's no new models coming out and, or hobby stuff. So, a lot of people are starting to look into, you know, we have these different companies creating, creating aftermarket parts, and a lot of people are saying, well, how do I do this? And as it turns out, there's um, a lot of different companies you can get the stuff from. A few examples. In Pennsylvania, there is a company called Smooth On. They make the silicon rubbers and the resins for doing resin castings. Uh, they do ship 
Um, just keep in mind, shipping's gone way up. Um, I'll post uh, by tomorrow a link to a video that I got um, a number of months ago where somebody took a toaster oven and turned it into a vacuum former where you can make your own vacuum form copies of things using right. nothing more than the toaster the toaster oven, a little wooden box with a piece of a pegboard on it, and a shop vac. Nice. Um, yeah, and so I picked up a toaster oven for 15 bucks on Thanksgiving Day just to do that. Very nice. You know, the other part... The other parts are a little more expensive, but no big deal there. <clears throat> um, other th other things people are using to make aftermarket parts. Uh, to make your own decals, you can use those pre-printed laser paper that includes the white already on it, or you can get a printer that will also print white. Now, those are expensive. Oh, yeah. And, but, but for making your own decals, you can get them. Just make sure when you're looking at the decal paper ahead of time whether you are buying laser or inkjet because one will not work in the other. Those are very specific. And you do have to treat the paper after you print it. It requires a little spray that you put on it. Uh, but these are some of the things people are using to create their own stuff. The other thing that they're doing now is 3D printing. And there's some, um, if you can afford your own 3D printer, there's places online you can download 3D models. Or you can have somebody make one for you. Um, I recently picked up a 3D printer. And I'm slowly getting into how to create my own stuff, which I'll be looking at within the next number of months. And from there, I could take whatever I printed and I can turn it into a resin cast using the silicon molds and then just fill it with resin and then it's ready to go as a resin cast model. Nice. Mm-hmm. And for those who can really afford things, you can then take the, the same 3D model that you did a um, 3D printout of. You can get a, um, a CNC mill and a plastic injector and literally make your own models. Nice. That, that's literally where, where the technology is at. I know somebody who spent... Um, about a thousand dollars for a CNC machine, and he's got a plastic injector. I don't know how much he paid for that, but he said for it to be worth it, you know, you need at least several. Uh, you need about a thousand, thousand of a particular item run to make it worth it. But he can, so he makes game bases and he sells a lot of those. For the different uh, wargaming things. Nice. But that's where the technology is at, and a lot of it has moved to the point where you can do it in home. And there are in home plastic injectors, but they're not designed for, high, for production runs. They're designed where you're only doing, you know, 50 to 100 at a time because it can be labor intensive, where the bigger machines are not designed for. You know, they're not labor intensive. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind but, doing what's in my own sort of custom stuff for the Zoids that I've got. Like, I would love to make a gravity cannon for the Ultrasaurus. Because that's one of the few things you can't get. They never... It's like one of the mainstay weapons in the anime, and they never released it as a kit. And it's just like, well, what the hell? Well, if you can get a 3D model of it, you can then turn around and have it printed. And I'm sure you can look online to find somebody in Australia that could print it. Oh, if yeah. not, you know, 
the, the, the 3D model, I could print it and I, I'll mail it to you. The, the problem, the, yeah, shipping stuff. Problem shipping is, fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, as I said, the problem is to scale the gravity cannon is about a foot long. To scale of the oh. Ultrasaurus, it's freaking huge. <laughs> like, it's a monster. What if- would it be something you could create using uh, scratch building supplies, such as like um, styrene rods and and stuff? Possibly. Um... Try breaking it down um, to see what what you would need. But um, look at companies like Evergreen and um, Plastrux. I think is the other one that makes the the styrene rods and so forth. And if it's, it's going to be a foot long, you might want to use just like a brass rod so it won't bend all that much. And then you can cut that down and and then insert the plastic around the outsides. Yeah. So it's I've sent you a picture um, of what it looks like. Someone's actually made one. And um, I've sent it to you through the, the Skype chat. I see. Yeah. So that model kit itself is about the top of that thing from like from ground up would be about the same length as my elbow to my hand, top of my hand, my knuckle if it's perfectly straight, just to give you an idea of relative scale. And the length of that sort of the just the tip of that barrel is yeah, it's that thing is just monstrous. So the thing that they actually sell is the dinosaur in the middle. What they don't sell is the power unit, which is the little thing on one side and the the big cannon, which is the thing on the other. And for the record, no. I have no idea how the hell it was meant to... It managed to move that crazy shenanigan stuff. Like, it is goddamn huge. <laughs> this Does is that a, really surprise you, though? This is a shot from the anime. But in the anime, the Ultrasaurus is effectively... Uh, um, their equivalent of an aircraft carrier. The thing is feckin' massive. Uh, yeah, looking at the when you're talking a foot long on piece like that, you know, even if you had it 3D printed, it's going to be pricey. Oh but yeah. You can probably, like I said, you can probably look online. You might be able to find um, the full specs of it, and then break it down into the, the different components to try and make it. Yeah. Oh, I see. I'm very lazy. I'm the sort of person that goes, "Somebody else make the thing for me." And then they say fifty thousand dollar, and I'm like, "Yeah, no, fuck yourself. I'm I'm just gonna live without it because I can, because <laughs> that's the sort of person I am." You're lazy, but you're not lazy. Yeah, I'm lazy to a point. So, uh... especially with what you're doing with um, EJ at the moment. EJ at the moment? Oh, you mean dead, the the stuff we're doing for Deadliest Fandom? Yeah. Yeah, the, the artwork for that, yeah. I'm sort of... Right now, um, we're working on... Each week before the podcast, me and EJ have a bit of a meeting and we work out who we're going to be doing for the next week. This week's battles are actually going to be pretty cool. We've got... The first one is just dropped, and that's Aragon versus Jamie Lannister. Um, so... And to be honest, I'm pretty sure that's a fairly one-way affair. That's pretty much Aragorn will slaughter him. But it is Jamie Lannister at his prime before he lost his hand, so... Yeah. Now, this one is the one that's going to be popping on um, at the end of the week. It's the Wraith Invasion of the Twelve Colonies. It's two Wraith Hives, seven Wraith Cruisers. Versus... A Galactica class battle star, a Pegasus class battle star, and half a dozen Berserk class battle stars. Now that would be a fight. Well, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. We've also got Star Lord versus Malcolm Reynolds. Both of them have been sent to chase after the same thing by rival groups, and they've been told to stop at nothing to claim their prize. What their prize is? Hey, <laughs> so the the question is, who would 
who would win in a death match between those two? Neither. They'd probably kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like I saw a meme online. It was who would win, Han Solo or Mal? And it's like Han shoots first, Mal doesn't miss. So. So. Yeah. It comes down to. Does Mal, if Mal survives the first shot, will Han insta regret it? Probably. Probably. And right, Stuart, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, time to do the news. Okay. Because I'm rambling and this podcast has got a crap. So, woo! Best <laughs> episode ever of the best podcast ever. And the hobby right, report so, was brought uh, to you by... Oh yeah, hobby report was brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Totally forgot to do that. My bad. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Krypton, uh, I reported this a few months ago. Uh, it's a prequel series and it will follow Superman's granddad and it's been greenlit by sci-fi. Which Superman? Man doesn't of... say, it just says Superman's grandfather. Yeah. This guy, is it the Man of Steel Superman? Is it, um... Superman... I'm gonna take a guess. I'm just gonna go Smallville. Smallville, yeah. Well, there's rumours that the Smallville actor is gonna be the one that plays Superman in Supergirl, so that would be pretty cool. Ah, love us. Yeah, uh, this week on The Flash, because, oh my goodness, last week's episode was, uh, brutal at the end. Oh, wasn't it? I was going to bring that up. Totally forgot about it. There was something I forgot. I, even I wasn't expecting what they were going to do. Oh, that ending. You weren't expecting that? Really? Not so, uh, I knew, I knew what it was in the comics, I wasn't expecting it so early. In the, I was expecting, like, season three. Yeah. So, bye bye, Flash. Bye bye. He's not dead. I know. He's he, he's like Master Yoda. He's become one with the Speed Force. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this week's episode is actually the episode that uh, Kevin Smith actually directed. Ooh. The one that made him apologize for all the bad things he said about um, Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> So what's on deck? What's uh, so yeah, it's called uh, the run the runaway dinosaur. Uh, why they call it that? Oh god! Do it. You're going again. Ah, god damn it! In your back. What you need to do is talk and then stop for a little bit, and then talk again, because that seems to fix it. Okay. So the episode is called The Runaway Dinosaur. Yep. All the stupid names to give a Flash episode. Uh, it could have been worse. I'm expecting this is how Wally gets his powers. But the question is, yeah. what will the what will her powers be, the the other girl? Well she's meant to be a speed she's a speedster in the comics as well. So they'll both become speedsters? Supposedly they follow the comics? Huh. That would be cool. Yeah. Triple the so Flash. We have team, yeah, team, team, team Speed and Team Arrow. Yeah. Uh, that's assuming Barry turns up at some point. It'll be fun. It, it's already said that the the on the the final episode is is uh, Flash has this final battle with Zoom. Yeah, but is it Wally so West Flash back. or Barry Flash? No, it's Barry. I suspect Wally's going to do the, in this, the back in time bullshit and bullshit the because, bullshit. Because um, because in the synopsis it says after Zoom guest star Teddy Sears reveals his true plans, Barry vows to do whatever it takes to stop him. Fair enough. I guess so, we'll yeah, find out when, when. Yeah. Have you heard that Supergirl is in trouble and may is currently not going to be renewed on the her original network? Yes, this is 
there's a lot of rumors flying around with this. A lot of people think CW is going to pick it up. Yeah. Well, what would be really cool is C- CW's lineup by the end of sort of ne- by the start of next year. Mondays, Supergirl. Tuesdays, Flash. Wednesdays, Arrow. Thursdays, Constantine. Friday's Legends of Tomorrow. They're bringing Constantine back. No. But I'm just saying, if they did, that would be the lineup I'd run with. And that would be spectacular. That would be a <clears throat> hero universe to challenge Marvel. Because the, the DC movie universe right now is just falling apart. Left, right, and center. As usual. So... Well, they've got, what, two different directors. The director for the Flash movie and the Aquaman movie. Uh, but, well, the Flash one's definitely gone and the Aquaman one's looking at going. So, yeah. Trouble in Paradise. Yeah. What's Trouble in Paradise? Um, the issues that they're having in the DC movie universe... Between um, the I guess the Flash directors quit. Oh something. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the Aquaman yeah, he ones. Left the project. And the Aquaman ones looking at doing the same. So both of them citing conflicts with Snyder. So. Uh. So that could be interesting. I hope they don't screw up the Flash. I really like the Flash. Yeah. I've got a sneaking suspicion that the DC superhero bubble has already burst. It's it's, it's effectively done. Um, this Batman Why versus okay. Superman was, its re- was their real chance to get that established and going and... While it did well, it didn't do anywhere near as well as they wanted it to. Um, so, it definitely didn't do well compared to any of the Marvel movies. So I suspect I that they... we're going to be hearing all sorts of sort of shake-ups in their cinematic universe because it's obviously not going anywhere near according to plan. I think DC needs to stick to the digital Stick to the, the animated, the animated, the animated stuff. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, Killing Joke can't be too far away from coming out. Uh, Killing Joke comes out after uh, it debuts at uh, San Diego Comic Con, and it comes out afterwards. Oh, okay. Then again, we got Suicide Squad coming out soon. That's, that also comes out in August. That's a fair point. Suicide which Squad, I, have, I think, will be the test. Done for. Suicide Squad, I think, will be that will be the litmus test. If Suicide Squad does well then maybe the DC Cinematic Universe can be sort of... Su- saved? Saved. If Suicide Squad does badly, then I suspect that's going to be it for the DCU. They're going to start pulling back on movies. And while Marvel is still going really strong, if DC starts pulling back and being a little bit like... Um, other groups might start doing the same. So, but at the moment, Marvel's doing really well, so it's... The catch catch that DC's going to have to watch out for is Suicide Squadron is not about heroes. Yeah. So, while it's related to the, like, Batman versus Superman, it's not a direct... It's not a direct... So... Oh, it's they, villains, they not can't... the heroes. It's it's a right. It's a parallel, not a not a sequel. Right. Yeah. And completely different story. So even if it does well, which you know, it has the potential to do, I mean, it could do like um, Deadpool did because you know you're talking bad guys here, or, or, which I can be just as cocky and mouthy as Daredevil is, or uh, Deadpool is. Yeah. Well, so Harley Quinn it, is it, the DCU's Deadpool. So, 
Um, yeah. So potential. The catch is is it where they want to go with the stories. Um, they they even if they do really really well with this one, that they can't hope that that's going to help them with further Superman or Batman or even Justice League films. Yeah. Well, see, what Marvel done, which is what I think kept them afloat for so long, is they made each individual movie's, like each individual, individual character's movie, its own flavour. Captain America is a war sort of movie, and it's sort of a, a relative, it's sort of that direction. Thor is more of a fantasy. Iron Man is more sci-fi. Guardians of the Galaxy is pure sci-fi. And they've sort of right. broken them up so that the individual movies have their own little slot that they can fall into so that they don't tread on each other's feet. What DC's done so far is it's gone dark and gritty work with Batman. So we're going to do dark and gritty for everything. And that flavor gets old fast. And I right. think they're only just starting to notice that. And um, if they can get away from that, I think they stand a chance of actually doing some really good movies, because DC can do good movies. But, right, yeah. They, their DC t- television series are good. Oh, yeah. And they, they think, and they followed the rule that you just mentioned. You know, Arrow is dark and gritty. Flash is more bright. And Supergirl is even brighter than that. Exactly. You know, each of them has their own elements to them. On what type of villains are in the show, yes, they do cross them over here and there. And even Legends of Tomorrow, that is your sci-fi head trip where each of the other two don't don't touch much of that realm. Exactly. And that's, so they, that's, that's sort of the key. And like you look at, even if you look at, say, the Star Trek series, the Star Trek series, when they did the multiple parallel TV shows, they had a different sort of flavor to the different series. Even though this, the right. premise was still the same, the core of the stories was still the same. And that's something that DC has, hasn't has really got. Now, if Batman, if Superman was more a Superman movie, if Batman was more of a, like a better way of putting it, a, a darker, more serious movie, if Wonder Woman was more of an, a, a war action sort of movie, because that's what they need to be. They need to be their own pieces that are independent of each other and then have them come together in a combined effort. Whereas what they're doing is they're setting up this dark and gritty universe and if they all follow down that line, it's it's going to implode. It, it can't sustain itself. Because each if you go dark and gritty, then every movie after that's got to be darker and grittier and darker and grittier. And it's got to follow that trend down into the abyss and there's only so far people will follow that down before they give up on it. They're just like, yeah, whatever, we don't care anymore. And the thing, that I, the thing that I'm worried about is if people start walking away from the DC movies, there's a chance that they could get fed up with superhero movies altogether, which is what will burst the, the, the larger Marvel superhero bubble. And I think we're still on that path, and I think we will reach that point probably by 2018, 2019. So, anyway. So, yeah, we still got Star Wars. We'll still have Star Wars. Yeah. So, <laughs> one last... We won't gonna... talk about oh. the dancing. He's just going to pump out those movies. Oh, yeah. Well, one last thing before we move away from the Marvel stuff. Um, they've dropped the Inhumans movie um, from their list of movies that is coming. But the Russo brothers have said that Captain Marvel will be in the Infinity War Infinity. two-parter. Yeah. They immediately backtracked after they said it and sort of went, oh, no, um, not, um, 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 and sort of <laughs> dodged away from it. They them. kind of weren't meant to say that. Yeah, they got a, they're going to get in a little bit of trouble for saying it. A tiny little bit of a lot of trouble. Um... So, yeah. Well, supposedly they dropped in here. There's two mis- um, there are two live action movies added that don't have titles yet. So I'm guessing 
What? Well, there don't, isn't there? There's already a Captain Marvel movie set up, though, isn't there? Um, I think Captain Marvel was one of is going to be one of them. Okay, so what's the question is is what's the other one? Black Widow. There's rumors that that's going to happen. Well, she is on. She's contracted for a standalone. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So it's well, I was reading an article that said she was con. She's she's contracted for a potential standalone. So. Ah. But I would love to see a Black Widow origin story. I'd actually like to see, uh, yeah, Black Widow and also Hawkeye origin story. And then, and then we can finally find out what happened. Uh, what, what was that reference in Avengers One? Yeah, I've got, I've got Red on the ledger, and I want to wipe it out. <laughs> Just no, 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 no. What happened in that country? I can't remember what the country was. Uh um, oh, what you're talking about with the Russians at the very, very beginning, which is like, but I mean. I'm in the middle of an interrogation, and the guy's like, "Wait, she's interrogating us? What the hell?" No, 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 no. There was a, a ref- uh, maybe it was an Ultron, but they referenced something that happened in, um when they were on a mission together or in a country, and I can't remember what it was. And it was like, "Don't remind me of, of that place." So maybe, maybe we find out what finally happened. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm not actually sure which what you're referencing there. There. Yeah. Anyway, what other news do we have? It was a vague line. I remember. What other news is Any there? Any other news? Yeah, uh, super, let's talk about Supernova and Oscar because they are go- they are just going at each other. Oh, aren't they? Yes. Bloody hell! It's like oh. it's like here we have this person, and then Supernova's like, haha, we gotta be really quiet. Be very very quiet. We're hunting of Comic Con, and then Oscar Comic like, we've got these people and these people, and everybody gets a people, and. Supernova's like, we've got these people who all cancelled, so we've got these people. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, they got some. Well, it's sad that that gal had to cancel, but it's not surprising because they're filming Justice League. Yeah. But good lord, did they replace it? Uh, there are some replacements. Did Travis they? Fimmel, who's uh, currently in Vikings. Well, see what. And he's going to get Anduin in oh. um, Warcraft. Oh, yeah. Then we got. Then we probably got two of the biggest. They probably had the biggest lines at Supernova: Rihanna Hildebrand and Stefan Kapi- uh, Stefan Kapicic, who are Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Colossus from Deadpool. Oh yeah, they're gonna have a line, <laughs> especially since the blu rays <laughs> coming out soon. Yeah, they'll be huge. Um, uh, from Supergirl, uh, Peter Fascinelli is gonna be in it. It's going to be a supernova. Nice. So maybe I'll uh, try and hit him up and see if he can drop something for me. <laughs> Don't think he will, but I'll try anyway. Uh, for, Charm fa- uh, for Charm fans, Brian Krause is going to be joining there, so he'll be joining uh, Shannon Doherty and Holly Marie Coe. Yep. And Tyler Hoechlin, uh, who's uh, just uh, who's on Team Wolf at the moment. Cool. Yeah. And then I was Comic Con have just been announcing guests like there is no tomorrow. Oh yeah. So, okay, yeah. the question is where's the guests where are they announcing guests for? Uh Melbourne. It's all Melbourne because that's their next tour. Yeah, Oz Comic Con is Melbourne and Supernova. No, no, just is Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, Oz Comic Con is just Melbourne. And then it just and then the last tour is Sydney Perth. Uh, Sydney Brisbane, I mean. Yeah. Sorry, Sydney I Perth want... is Supernova. I want to go and see Amanda Tapping. Oh, I can't. He's Brisbane, though. So... Amanda Tapping's coming to Brisbane. Can't wait for that. It's going to be great. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this week's show. We managed to blunder through another episode. Who knows how we pulled that one off. Stuart, <laughs> you're fired because your microphone still doesn't work properly. Um, Amy, uh... you're not fired because you're so hyperactive. If I did try and throw you out the airlock, <laughs> we would have to tie a rope to you. And even though we're in the vacuum of space... <laughs> You would still somehow be able to pull the ship forwards by swimming. <laughs> Eugene, you're my engineer. I can't fire you because then my ship won't move. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it for this week. Catch you later. Catch you next time. Check. Make sure you give us a like and share the podcast. I know it's a smoldering pile of crap, but please send us the love. Um, check us out on facebook.com slash save sci-fi, facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast, facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom. 
Facebook.com slash Garrison7. You always got to keep on going on Garrison7. They're really cool. And we will catch you guys later. Bye. Bye all.